Hello and welcome to the next Maya Modeling Basics video and here we are finally going to start bringing in some polygon shapes. Uh, everything up to this point has been just preparing our scene, our files, and this next part as we're building up our Maya shelf, it's going to take a little bit of time and it's only going to be the first time where all this happens. Normally this takes like about two minutes to get everything arranged and sorted up to this point. <clears throat> so let's begin. So by default, under Polygon Modeling tab, we have a bunch of these shapes right here. We have the sphere, cube, cylinder, cone, torus, plane, and this disc. Now, we kind of, if you don't mind bouncing between some tabs, uh, we can do that. Now, something else we can do is we can go under Create, Polygon Primitive. I'm just going to click on this little dotted line right up here, just so that it breaks it into its own shape, uh, its own menu pop-up. <clears throat> and we have a list of a lot more shapes. Now, we have uh, Prism, Pyramid, Platonic Solid, uh, Pipe, Helix, Gear, Soccer Ball, uh, and a bunch of others. Like some of these actually I haven't even seen before. So the common ones that I've used is a cube. So I'm going to add a cube to my list. I use cylinders frequently. Uh, I do use toruses, but I actually use them more in order to get a pipe uh, kind of shape. So I'm actually going to just create a pipe. Yeah, that's what I want. Um, just in case, uh, it's very rare that I use a cone. Uh, you know what? I'll add it in if I need to later on. But these these are pretty much the primary shapes overall. Uh, uh, spheres, I haven't used them. You know what? I'm just going to add them in because they're, they're at least like kind of used here and there. Uh, but yeah, that's the the basics of and feel free to experiment you know different people end up using different shapes for various items and so with this you can even just like go to polygon primitives and click on the cube but we wanted to create this shelf so we can just click and it's there uh, now you may have also seen the interactive creation and what that involves is if I click on cube it says drag the base so drag for the base and then left click and drag in order to create the height in order to get our cube like shape so you could end up having that instead so even if I uncheck this if I click on this little cube it remembers that it was the interactive shape version uh, so this actually might be handy to have and this is a handy time to shelves we have our cube and this one is the interactive version and close uh, actually uh, save all shelves because <clears throat> sometimes it's a little quicker for that but by default cube we have our cube in this case and different shapes will have some different elements and the first thing that we can do is uh, we I haven't talked about moving around in this space so if I hold down alt and I use the left mouse button I can rotate the camera if I use alt and the middle mouse button it lets me pan the camera or dolly it around and alt and right mouse button lets me zoom in and zoom out or you can just scroll on the scroll wheel but I find the scroll wheel it's not as smooth it's it pops to various locations uh, so that is moving the camera and if you've never moved around the camera in Maya before I spend like I recommend spending a little bit of time just to kind of get comfortable with it uh, my thumb is holding down the alt key uh, on my left hand as my right hand is maneuvering through these buttons and with that, with this cube in space, we can actually use our move in order to either move them along one axis or using these squares for along two axes or the middle 
to move in all three axes. And this is with respect to the camera's angle. So if I move the cam camera in this direction, it's going to be moving in a flat surface in 3D uh, with respect to the camera. So here, the camera to this point is the exact same distance as the camera to this point, and here, and here. It's not moving away in space when you're using the middle. Uh, and rotate, we have the three different axes, plus we have this light blue one, and this light blue one is, again, rotating dependent on the camera. And we have scale, and the scale in our single directions. And if we use these squares, it will be in two of the three axes, X, Y, and Z, and this middle cube in order to scale all three. And as we're doing that, we can actually see the numbers changing inside of the channel box up here. So with that, if we end up moving it and we don't like how it's set and we end up scaling it around a little, we can actually change all our translates and rotates to zero and we could change all of our scales to one in order to bring it back to its original shape. Now there there is a situation where this is going to be different and we're going to talk about that later on uh, but this is the first way in order to quickly change the shapes of objects of polygons and if I bring in a sphere we can see that it does the exact same thing. Scale, even if I change that, we can see that those numbers are changing. And rotate and translate. And if I zero the rotations out, change all the scales to one, it reverts it back to its original shape. If you want to delete a polygon shape, you could actually just select it and hit delete. Another way in order to edit our shapes is under this inputs, we see this polycube one. And if we click on polycube one, we can see that there's a width, height, depth, and subdivision width, height, depth, and we can kind of ignore this create UV section. But width, if I click on the word width and I use my middle mouse button to press and drag left to right, we can see that I can adjust the width of this shape. If I hold down shift, it will adjust it much quicker. So without holding down shift, we can see it changes it by one decimal point. So as I'm scrubbing along, we can see it goes from 15.2 to 15.3, 4, 5, 7, 9. If I hold down shift, it will just scale by a whole number. If I hold down control, it will scale by two decimal places. So control will give you a little more control. Shift is great for big, big moves and regular just for a normal amount. So you can imagine height, same thing. You can even select all three of them or multiples and it will add dependent on the current ratio. It'll keep the ratio the same. Uh, subdivision, height, width, and depth we'll add in extra edge loops. So these are edges in order to split the polygons around, and we're gonna see soon enough how we can actually edit the shapes using edges and vertices and faces. So this input is great for starting off because if we end up creating a duplicate later on, our original still has its inputs temporarily, but our duplicate does not. So you want to keep that in mind on if you still want access to that inputs in order to make some changes. Now, the last way that we can make some big changes to our polygon shapes is by holding down right click and we get this little mini marking menu. Now, there's a lot in here. Uh, I will tell you, I've never bothered with vertex face, multi, at all. And UVs we're going to get to uh, in texturing. So the only ones we really care about are object mode, 
to bring it back to this. Edge mode, this lets us select edges. Vertex mode lets us select the vertices. And face mode, which lets us select the faces of the polygon. And object mode lets us go back to grabbing the whole object. Uh, so keep that in mind. And with let's, any of these modes, we can actually select those vertices and move them around and change their shapes. We can grab a bunch of them and scale them out and rotate them. Uh, we can go to like face mode here and pull this out and rotate it around in order to do some like really funky stuff. So maybe you'll flatten that up. And if we go to edge mode, we can actually grab whole edges. So with these tools alone, we already are starting to get a lot of control in how we want the shape to look. And we can actually do the same thing with like the pipe, for example. If we take a look at the inputs on the pipe, we can see we have radius. So that's the overall radius of the pipe. And that radius, we can see that it at this uh, setting of two, that means two units in this. And we set these units to be meters before. Uh, we can change the height. We can change the thickness of that pipe. And again, we can hold down control in order to have it move in a more controlled way. Subdivision axis, this is the amount of edge loops that go around the pipe. So if we are working with like quick block outs, we can keep the polygons super low or for some reason, if you need them crazy high, right now it says 50 is not letting me scrub higher, but I can actually type in a number in order to change that value to something different. Uh, subdivision height, that will be the amount of edge loops going along the height and subdivision caps if we need extra edge loops wrapping around the caps of the cylinder right here. Uh, the sphere is very similar. Also, we have a radius. We have a subdivision axis, so the amount of subdivisions along the axis, and subdivision height, where we can actually adjust those edge loops right there. So we have lots and lots of control, even using these tools right here. So on the next video, I'm going to show some extra right-click functions using control to make it a little bit quicker and easier to grab certain side types of edge loops or faces or vertices. But the next full video, I'm going to talk about creating layers and locking selections and uh, and the outliner in order to kind of organize our files as we're starting to build in the modeling. So see you then.